Welcome back. I've got in front of us here a still photo so we can look at it, but this is the final one of the B250 AliExpress mining motherboards I wanted to briefly cover. Very similar to the BTC12P, which is the previous board I covered that has all actual PCI Express slots, but I'll go over a few of the differences. One being it is a micro ATX board, not a full-size ATX board. It has 12 USB style ports for a direct riser connection. Same chipset, same BIOS, same CPU support. It has HDMI video out instead of VGA and DVI. And it has USB 2 and 3 front and back, unlike USB 2 only for the BTC 12P. Runs on DDR4 memory, uh, like I said, Intel 6th and 7th gen processors. This one's got a Core i3-6100 in it, just because it was the cheapest CPU I could find. And beyond that, all solid capacitors, pretty well built. Definitely a four-layer PCB, so there's nothing special about it. But they didn't really seem to spare a lot of expense. And it's nice to see that this thing should actually hold up in the more harsh climates that us miners tend to put hardware in so I, it's nice to see two front usb headers it's nice to see chassis fan headers um but there really isn't much separating this from the btc 12p or the cheaper b75 options which usually come with you know a celeron or a pentium bundled with it for $70 or so. This board was about $92 when I bought it, and we'll get into the functionality. It's working pretty well, frankly. Well, I promised, and I guess I'll deliver, the other variant of the AliExpress 12 GPU B250 motherboard. This is the version that has 12 USB 3.0 Type 1, essentially, ports on it that are designed to directly interface with your typical PCI Express by 1 to by 16 riser. No, no, I cannot. <laughs> um, this board is a little bit cheaper than the version that has full PCI Express slots on it, and it probably has a little bit less um, staying power after cryptocurrency mining because it doesn't have the ability to slot in a full by 16 GPU and use it as like a gaming rig or basically anything graphics intensive. It does still have an HDMI video out, still has integrated video or um, ethernet, it still has USB ports, uh, it still has headers for everything, it still has a conventional front header for uh, power switch, LED, and USB. However, um, again, this is essentially a board you have to buy knowing that its only useful purpose is for mining. So that's a risk I took. I'm fully in it, even post ETH merge uh, for GPU mining. I've actually been adjusting which cards I buy based on a few other coins that I'm looking at moving over to and efficiency therein. So anyway, back to the board. I had zero BIOS edits on this. I've never even plugged in a display to this board. I literally took it out of the box, put in my Core i3-6100, which was the cheapest CPU I could find from the 6th or 7th gen uh, family. Even cheaper than Celeron G3900s, because everyone's looking for those specifically by keyword. So that would be my first piece of advice. Make sure you're looking at like G3930s, make sure you're looking at the Pentium G4500 or whatever that is. The Core i3, Core i5, um, the Core i3 and i5 also have a T variant, which is low power. So if you're doing CPU mining, pretty good option. Uh, it cuts about 20 watts off your rig. So anyway, I digress. Put a CPU in it, put a cooler on it, put a couple sticks of DDR4 memory in it, plugged it in. It immediately fires up. The BIOS is set out of the box to power on after a power outage, which is great for a mining rig. It's already got settings for either Gen 2 or Gen 1 on the PCI Express. It detected every card right off the bat. I didn't even do them one at a time on this rig. So very, very stable. I am running Hive OS, which is an Ubuntu Linux-based mining OS. You can run Windows on it. Just make sure you're upping the page file uh, accordingly for your GPU memory. And I would recommend running at least 16 gigabytes of RAM on it if you're going to run Windows. It's just a lot more overhead. So huge plug for a Linux-based mining OS on these things. But 
worth mentioning that this board is really stable, much more stable than the version that has full PCI Express ports, which I covered on my AMD rig. Um, but yeah, this thing is solid. It's running 12 cards right now. This thing hasn't had any downtime for quite a while. It's even on a single 1200 watt PSU. It's, it's pretty good. The form factor of the board is, is very small. It's actually micro ATX. It's not even mini ATX. It's a very narrow, very short. Uh, it only really has four standoff holes that match up with a typical mining frame or case. So be a little bit careful when you're plugging stuff into it. But overall, it seems like the overhead is like 35 or 40 watts, even with an i3. So this thing is definitely designed to be in a rig, uh, efficiency in mind. So anyway, uh, let's get over to the HiveOS interface and I'll show you just a little bit more detail about it. Now, before we get there, this is another rig that is using that same motherboard. This has only got 10 cards on it right now. I will go up eventually. Uh, I just need a, a bigger frame for these big boys. But the other rig is basically all GTX 1660 Supers, uh, TIs, 2060s, and 3060s, so lower power cards. These are all 3060 Ti, 3070, or 3070 Ti. So much more powerful, higher performing cards. Same configuration, no issue, right out of the box. So... I wouldn't worry about running anything super powerful, or AMD even. Uh, you could mix and match, I think it will handle it just fine. So here we are in the Hive interface. You can see the B250 OEM BTC motherboard. BIOS is from, looks like September 18th, 2021, so pretty good. I haven't confirmed whether it has the same BIOS as the other variety of this board. It probably does. But you can see it detected the Core i3 just fine. Um, it's actually running on a hard drive. This is doing 407 mega hash with, again, primarily low power cards. This is all running on a single power supply. So this should be a pretty easy load for it. And here's the other one that only has 10 cards on it right now. Um, you can see it's only using like two gigabytes of RAM for 10 pretty high-end cards. Honestly, I have not had any real performance issues. I did have a dropout yesterday, you can see here, because one of these cards had a memory fault. But the board itself has not had any issues. Uh, I've been adding cards to it. They've been detected right off the bat. They started mining, no issue. I've not run into PCI Express resource issues like I have on the version with the full slots. So again, if you're buying this with no intent of using it past mining, I would highly recommend getting this version over the version with real slots. It just seems like it's a, a little bit more stable, but I honestly, I have no issue recommending this. There's probably a case to be made for, you know, someday you, you might benefit from a BIOS update, and there's pretty much no way you're ever going to get this BIOS off of whatever this version is, but I I don't think that's a problem. I, I don't see any anything on it, build quality-wise, that would really scare me off. It's solid capacitors. It's based on one of the most solid in my opinion, uh, generations of Intel hardware. So I don't know. I think this is a pretty good pickup if you can find one for, you know, 90 or 100 bucks. And you can get a CPU for less than $60. That's kind of a kicker too. It's getting a little bit easier, but B250 boards, a lot of the name brand motherboard manufacturers are also using that platform. So you're fighting a lot of other miners for a very finite selection of used CPUs. So you will pay a little bit more there. And honestly, if you're only planning to use 8 cards, I would recommend that B75 8 GPU version that I talked about in the last video. That thing is only $70 with a CPU. So basically the same upsides as this platform, and it's cheaper, but fewer GPUs. There is a 12 GPU variant out there, but I have not seen it for sale from any seller in the last several months. So I'm just going to ignore it. Anyway... Hopefully that helps. It's a good board. I have not had any issues with them. I will follow up if I ever have a failure, but so far so good.